Welcome back, everyone. It's Dina Kalmet here with CWW7 News. I hope you all had a great Christmas. And for today's broadcast, it's going to be a quick one. But I wanted to get you caught up on some headlines that have occurred earlier this week. And I'd like to first take you to this report from Reuters. Apparently, President Putin has stated that Russia would deploy its first regiment of hypersonic nuclear-capable missiles next year, saying the move meant his country now had a new type of strategic weapon. President Putin was speaking after overseeing what the Kremlin said was a pre-deployment test of the new missile system called Avangard. This test, which has just finished, ended with complete success, stated the Russian leader. From next year, 2019, Russia's armed forces will get the new intercontinental strategic system, Avangard. It's a big moment in the life of armed forces and in the life of the country. Russia has obtained a new type of strategic weapon. Russia has said the new missile system, one of the several new weapons Putin announced in March, is highly maneuverable, allowing it to easily evade missile defense systems. President Putin remotely observed the test from a Russian defense ministry building in Moscow. The Kremlin described the test in a statement, saying that an avant-garde missile launched from a location in southwest Russia has successfully hit and destroyed a target in the Russian Far East. Finally, it reports that President Putin announced an array of new weapons in March, saying they could hit almost any point in the world and evade a U.S.-built missile shield. Meanwhile, the Sun is reporting that Russia has begun testing an unstoppable underwater drone that experts fear could trigger a 300-foot radioactive tsunami with a massive nuclear blast into the sea. The unnamed Poseidon submarine designed to wipe out enemy naval bases is dubbed the City Buster because it is said to be able to sneak close to shore and unleash Armageddon. The prototype Doomsday craft took to the waves for the first time on Christmas Day to begin undersea trial. The drone is said to be powered by a miniaturized nuclear reactor, which has been fitted to the rear for ocean tests. However, development is at an early state, and the craft is being carried by one of Russia's Navy's nuclear submarines as part of a experimental design work rather than full-fledged sea trials at this stage. President Putin revealed the existence of the state-of-the-art new weapon earlier this year. He claimed it would be able to whiz through the ocean almost silently, up to 70 knots. The president stated in March, we have developed unmanned, submersible vehicles that can move at great depths, I would say extreme depths, intercontinentally, at a speed multiple times higher than the speed of submarines, cutting-edge torpedoes, and all kinds of surface vessels, including some of the fastest. It is really fantastic. They are quiet, highly maneuverable, and have hardly any vulnerabilities for the enemy to exploit. There is simply nothing in the world capable of withstanding them. It goes on further to report that the drones will be armed with conventional weapons and a two megaton nuclear warhead with the primary purpose of destroying naval bases. However, analysts at the Pentagon, which uses the name Canyon for the drones, are said to believe they will carry tens of megatons of explosive power. Experts have said that this kind of a blast underwater could be enough to trigger a tsunami as powerful as the one that killed 20,000 people in Japan and knocked out the Fukushima power plant in 2011. Rex Richardson, a physicist, stated that a well-placed nuclear weapon of yield in the range 20 MT to 50 MT near a sea coast could certainly couple enough energy to equal the 2011 tsunami, perhaps much more. Some reports claim the resulting wave could reach 300 feet, swamping entire cities. And there are fears it could blow ocean sediment into the air, generating a deadly radioactive dust cloud. Russia's Navy hopes is to have the Poseidon in service by 2027. Finally, it reports that the weapons unveiled earlier this year are part of an arsenal of advanced weapons Russia claims is capable of throttling the most modern defenses to help it win World War III. As Russia continues to build up their nuclear weapons for World War III, Arutz Sheva is reporting that Russia has accused Israel of gross violations in Syria. Moscow on Wednesday said Israel had violated Syria's sovereignty with airstrikes the day before after Israel and Damascus blamed each other for the hostilities. The Russian ministry stated that we are very concerned by the attacks and how they were made. 
This is a gross violation of the sovereignty of Syria. Moscow's defense ministry earlier said Israeli strikes had endangered two passenger planes. The provocative actions of the Israeli Air Force directly threatened two airliners, stated the ministry. The spokesman also said that the attack came from over Lebanese territory and came as two airliners, not from Russia, were preparing to land at the airports of Beirut in Damascus. He also stated that restrictions were imposed on the use of Syrian government forces air defense systems to prevent a tragic one of the planes was redirected to a Russian airbase within Syria. The Russian Defense Ministry said three Syrian military personnel were injured in a strike that saw Israeli warplanes drop 16 bombs. The targets of the Israeli airstrikes were several Hezbollah leaders, according to a report by Newsweek. The airstrike was conducted minutes after the leaders boarded a plane bound for Iran. Several Iranian ammunition supply points were also a target of the bombing. The supply points contained valuable GPS-guided ammunition from 2017, some of the best available to the Iranian army in Hezbollah. On the other hand, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Wednesday doubled down on Israel's policy of attacking Iranian-linked targets in Syria. He said we will not abide in Iranian entrenchment in Syria. We are taking action against it aggressively and powerfully, including in these very days. U.S. President Donald Trump's decision to pull out American soldiers from Syria does not change our policy, stated the prime minister. We stand firmly on our red lines in Syria and everywhere else. The Israeli Air Force's abilities are unmatched and can reach arenas near and far, very far stated Netanyahu. It goes on further to report that U.S. President Donald Trump surprised the world and many of his own officials by announcing last week that he would pull all 2,000 U.S. soldiers in Syria out of the war-torn country. And Israel is concerned that Iran will take advantage of the military vacuum to expand its entrenchment in Syria. It goes on finally to report also on Wednesday, Russia's foreign ministry said that Moscow expects the Syrian government to take over the areas where the U.S. troops are currently deployed following their withdrawal. And Turkey has said it is working with the U.S. to coordinate the withdrawal of American forces, but remains determined to clear U.S. allied Kurdish fighters from northeastern Syria and has been dispatching tanks and other military units to the border area. From these headlines alone, we can see the making of Bible prophecy. Specifically, Isaiah 17, 1 concerning Damascus becoming a ruinous heap, Ezekiel 38 in regards to Russia, Iran, and Turkey, as well as many other nations that will eventually try to attack and invade Israel, which they will fail miserably. And then we see the United States pulling out of Syria is more evidence of the prophecies in Ezekiel 38, 39 in regards to only God standing up and protecting Israel supernaturally against these nations that will try to invade her. And then of course we have wars and rumors of wars in Matthew 24, Mark 13, as well as Luke 21. So definitely some very interesting headlines this week. And I just wanted to bring you guys just a quick picture of what was happening this week. Please do leave your comments in the comments section. Tell me what your thoughts are about what's happening right now. Also, come and visit us on Facebook where we have these stories and many more, as well as our website at www.cww7news.org. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend and I'll see you on Monday. God bless. <music>